So, you want to make a 3x3? Go ahead, do it. Alright, you finished? Now show me. Uh huh. I see. Well, I'll tell you what, kid. It sucks. You wanted to suck less? You came to the right man. Welcome to the 3x3 manifesto. Lesson 1. What is a 3x3? Let me tell you that most 3x3s you've seen are probably slapdash lackluster pieces of shit with no redeeming qualities. So forget everything you think you know and listen to me. Fun <coughs> Okay, I'm not gonna keep doing this voice. <clears throat> Fundamentally, 3x3s are a collection of pictures from a favorite anime arranged in 3x3 grid. But I want to show you how to go a step beyond. What a 3x3 can be is a love letter to your favorites and a more intimate representation of your love for them. You can make many design decisions that can meaningfully impact the result to really give the person looking at your 3x3 an impression about you. About you and the anime that mean a lot to you. As well as obviously, there are many things you can do to make it more pleasing to look at in general. Lesson 2. What anime do I pick? Traditionally people pick their top 9 favorite anime. This is almost a no-brainer. A reasonable exception to this rule would be to maybe limit yourself when it comes to directors. For example, if your 3x3 has 4 different anime directed by Naoko Yamada and you think this doesn't help you in presenting your taste in nuance, consider limiting the numbers. If after this consideration you still have 4 Naoko Yamada directed anime in your 3x3, then it means so much more because you consciously decided against removing them. And that means Yamada really makes up such a huge chunk of your love for anime. Another suggestion from me, I would recommend limiting franchises to one entry. You don't need Evangelion and End of Evangelion separately. Similarly, your top 9 Monogatari series wouldn't make a compelling 3x3 either. A stand-in for the whole franchise will usually do the trick just fine. Lesson 3. What kind of grid do I put this in? A simple 3x3 of equally sized pictures. No more, no less. Some people try to be clever about it and make it odd shapes or 4x4 grid with a huge picture in the middle, 4 squares. And don't be like those people. The whole point of the 3x3 is the purity of its structure. The whole point is the limitation to your 9 favorites. A 3x3 format also provides the most opportunity for creative visual balance, which I will address later. But here's the revolution I'll present to you. Make that fucker widescreen. Traditionally, 3x3s used perfect squares, but I find this limit to be arbitrary and unnecessary. I recommend having the pictures be 16x9, so it can fit the full shot. But use whatever aspect ratio serves your purposes the most. Don't just blindly make it square. If you want it square, ask yourself why you want it square. Know why you want it square. Another relevant decision about the grid is the grid itself. Usually it's either white or black. But also the thickness of the lines can vary, or you have no lines altogether and the pictures seamlessly blend into one another. Decide on what works best for your pictures. Try out different looks and see. An easy way of doing this is using Pixlr Express, link in the description. Set the proportions to minus 44 and you get almost perfect 16x9. And then just add your pictures and fuck around until you find what works. The website has some flaws, so ultimately I recommend using a proper editing software on your PC to finalize your 3x3, but Pixlr will also do just fine. Lesson 4. What pictures do I use and why? This is one of the most important parts of your whole 3x3. It's the meat of it. The shortest possible answer to this question is, use the picture that means the most to you and represents what you love about the anime in question. But even then, there are multiple different ways of going about it. You can use screen caps only, or you can use official art as well, like posters or Blu-ray cover artworks, or even artwork from the soundtrack. Or you could go so far and use fan art. I personally do not like using anything but real screen caps. Make sure you get high quality, high resolution images. If you use screen caps, make them yourself. Don't trust what you find online. Go through the episodes and movies and grab what you need. This also adds a little personal charm to it. Alright, this is a what. But for the why, I'll start pulling up my own 3x3 as an example and just explain to you why I picked each picture so you can see the thought process behind the choices. 
I'll try to explain these choices while trying to spoil as little as possible about the actual shows and movies. So bear with me. Appa left. Monogatari series. The first reason I picked this picture from the Kizo Monogatari films is because these films are beautiful. And Hanekawa is the character that has impacted me the most out of all these characters. She is a character that hides her inner turmoil and sadness as to not be a burden on others. This is why I wanted a picture that shows her in a sort of sad and introspective mood, because that is the kind of melancholy that her character has in my mind. I also wanted a shot to capture the feeling of the Neko Monogatari Kuro opening. I could have just chosen one from the actual OP, but I find Kizo Monogatari to be more aesthetically pleasing. Upper middle. Tatami Galaxy. With this screen cap I wanted to capture the feeling of being boxed in and losing your mind in your own room. The perspective, the tatami floor pattern, the blackness outside the walls and the pose just below the so plot relevant MacGuffin all suggest and convey this feeling. Upper right, Ashita no Jo. Well, this is a very spoiler laden moment, but let's just say that this fight has consequences for the characters that play into Joe's deep loneliness and sense of purposelessness. As such, it really captures the ennui that characterizes so much of the series. Middle left. Revolutionary girl Utena. Even more spoiler than this one. Let's just say Utena is about oppression in many ways. And a lot of factors surrounding this picture represent just that. Middle. Neon Genesis Evangelion. The main reason for choosing this picture ties into a later lesson and has to do with how it is structured, with the black spot and the white spot, the moon and the earth forming two axes. But also, without that context, this picture is meaningful to me. It is a lot of spoilers though, so I'll just say this much. It is the climactic moment of all it seems about society, the nature of people and their relationships as well as the structures surrounding them and shaping us. Middle right, Gurren Lagan. First of all, the strong colors look aesthetically striking to me. And it also marks the start of Simon's journey, where he grabs hold of his fate and from here on out will relentlessly push forward. It embodies the empowering message of Gurren Lagann's hero's journey perfectly. Lower left. The night is short, walk on girl. It is perhaps a bit unclear what is even depicted, but even that is part of what I want to say with it. A big part of this movie is drinking how a night out drinking can bring people together. And this commotion of shadowy figures all drinking amidst a flowery haze really communicates the spirit of the film very well and the wild ride that it is. Lower middle, Gintama. This one is fairly simple. These are the characters you spend so much time with doing the usual energetic hijinks. I really wanted to capture their sense of family or community they're belonging together in the usual dynamic comedy routine. This picture does so well, looking very nice. Lower right. k -On. That's probably as big a spoiler as you can get with k -On, so I'll just say that this scene happened right after the highest point of the show's scenes. It's a calm moment afterwards that best embodies the peaceful belonging together of these friends and the celebration of their use. Lesson 5. How do I arrange them? Part 1. The colors. To make your 3x3 aesthetically pleasing, think about the colors of your screen caps and where you put them. Have some sort of logic, a gradient or symmetry behind it. Notice how my 3x3 mirrors its edges. Monogatari has a brownish color. Kayon also has a brownish color. Ashida no Joe has a dark bluish color. Night is Short also has a dark bluish color. Admittedly, in terms of color balance, the middle five do a bit less. You could maybe relate the red colors on the horizontal line, but Utena breaks out of that a little too much. And of course the beige and warm colors on the vertical line, but those were more accidental than intentional. Let's look at another 3x3 by, by a user of the Digibro Patreon Discord for a better example of color balance. Note how the general motif here is dark blue how every picture is carefully selected to fit that color scheme. This is another great way to do it. Lesson 6. How do I arrange them? Part 2. The structure. Alright, time to draw some lines on my 3x3. When arranging the images I have in this grid, I usually want to balance them out so that they form a visual flow and direct your gaze towards the middle or away from it. 
For example, try to make characters look to the middle or away from it consistently. Your left hand pictures should be leaning in their orientation. Take a look at the lines that I drew. Behind Hanakawa's head there's negative space that frames the middle picture. Next to the couch in the Utena picture there's also negative space. And again there's negative space in the Naito's short picture toward the middle. Notice the same thing on the right side with both Tatami Galaxy and Gintama being neutral capstones in the middle. I use this negative space to frame the axis in the Evangelion picture, to draw your gaze outward to the sides. Previously I had relied more on focusing the attention inwards. This is my old 3x3. See how the characters either are oriented towards the middle or are looking towards the middle. And how the Gintama crew occupies the middle fully. This is drawing your gaze to the middle and achieves a more intimate character-driven focus for the whole 3x3. Meanwhile, my new 3x3 really focuses on mostly seams, which is the next concept I want to present to you. Lesson 7. How do I arrange them? Part 3. The seams. This really is the sherry on top, but it is at the heart of my current 3x3. A theme. I previously mentioned the two axes in the Evangelion picture. I'll draw them in to show you what I mean. The top show is most meant to represent isolation and loneliness. The bottom show is most meant to represent community. The left show is most meant to represent disempowerment. And the right show is most meant to represent empowerment. The diagonals are always mixed shows of just those axes where both elements are present. All of them pulled together by the Evangelion picture. Community is the earth, the here, the we. Isolation is the moon, the far away, the lonely. The dark spot is disempowerment, it's bleak, it doesn't shine. The bright glowing spot is empowerment, it is bright emitting energy. Evangelion revolves around a lot of dualisms like this, so I built my 3x3 from there. So you can create a meta-narrative within your own 3x3 to tell people something about your broader taste if you get creative about it. You can even tie it into the iconography of the actual animes you are referencing. Think about this aspect. Maybe you'll find something you want to incorporate. This was the last lesson. You now have all the tools to make a great and meaningful 3x3 that can communicate far more than just your top 9 favorite anime. It can communicate something about you.